Well, I don't know what it is with the weather these days. Glorious sunshine, middle of winter. We're here at Sunbatch Motorway Services. We're on the M6 and we're actually southbound at the moment. We were here, oh, about a year ago, it must have been, when they were building the grid surf chargers that are now operational here. And so this is a very popular stop. There's a big lorry park, massive car park. It's always a busy location and it's really handy because it's fairly central whether you're coming from the southeast or going to the southeast and Scotland. Now, in the early days of EVs and EV charging, it was a company called Electric Highway who started all uh, the public chargers and they seem to have just done a uh, contract with all the motorway services monopoly in effect and they then put in these 40 50 kilowatts usually dual bay chargers but back in the day they were started off as a single bay um, and these are still around all over the place grid serve when they took over from electric highway the first thing they did they took all of those old electric highways out and updated them they're still not very good these are around about 40 50 sometimes 60 kilowatts they're always dual bay which means that if you get two cars parked here at busy times you're going to get 20 or 30 kilowatts it's not exactly ideal particularly not for a road trip uh, but they are here we've also got a uh, very nice uh, for grid serve they have contactless for fast chargers and this is not as common as many people think the new government regulations from the 24th of November 2024 state that all chargers, public chargers over 8 kilowatts, these are usually either 11 or 22, so they qualify, must have a method of payment. And this one actually has uh, contactless payment. And they have been installing these for quite some time, certainly over, over a year, maybe near, nearer two. So fully compliant. Uh, not very good, but they got us through so people could charge here. And if it was empty and you plugged in a 50 kilowatts, uh, four or five years ago, 50 kilowatts was actually quite a good rate of charge because most cars uh, weren't up, up that fast. They also had the Chadamo as well, uh, this is Nissan Leafs, uh, and these are absolutely ideal. But we were here uh, quite a while ago, probably about a year ago now, and when we arrived, they were actually installing the replacements. Okay, I've been driving EVs now for just coming up to five years and I've noticed a magnificent, tremendous difference in the public charging. We have gone from, these are actually second generations, the original was the electric highway, really inferior ones, but these were replaced when GridServe took over and they've served us for quite a while. But of course now we've gone up again and GridServe are now installing the 350 kilowatt single bay chargers and usually there's one of those one of those has uh, <laughs> oh, sorry we're just getting recognized all over the place um, and one of those is a chadamo uh, charger as well i think two of them um, so we've gone from two dual bay 50 40 50 60 kilowatt uh, so you get 30 at busy time up to 350 brand new cabinets behind. Uh, we were here last time, we were actually talking to the engineers. They hadn't installed them and they were, they were at that point trying to work out how to get power from this side, because we've got a substation there, over to the northbound side. And they had two options. One was to go over the motorway, the other was to go under with what they call the mole. Uh, people are becoming more familiar with these. Uh, since they've uh, finished, we found out that they've gone over the motorway. So tacked un or clipped underneath the bridge over the motorway is the main power cable that goes from this side over to the other side. And over there, they also have six grid serve, 350 kilowatt ABB units, uh, single bay. So when you get uh, into the middle of an installation, the first thing you'll always have is a substation. And this is where the main power comes in off the grid uh, into the site, the location. So that's the power coming in. That could be 11,000 volts, 110,000 volts, whatever it is. And that work then will bring it down to a more sensible level. Coming down here, uh, these are coming down and we're looking here at 400 volts. So we can't plug 11,000 <laughs> 11, volts into a car. Uh, so we have to drop it down. So it's dropped down in stages. First stage, it brings it down to three phase. 
it typically is round about 400. A lot of people try and correct me and say the three phase is always 415 volts. It is not. Inside the substation, there's a, there's a transformer. And on those transformers, there are simple selector switches, which will go from 380 up to 480. And you just select whatever you want. Most people, before the uh, advent of public EV chargers, chose 415. Don't know why, it's just one of those things, they chose it. When you come on to charges, it's very different. These here for GridServe, uh, they're saying 400 volts here. When you go to a, to a Tesla supercharger, they set the switch inside to 480 volts. Everyone, they're all the same, so it's not 415, it's 480. Tesla, for some reason, do like to have just a higher voltage coming into the site. So that's the uh, power then that goes through to the grid. Uh, to the cabinet, sorry. This is normally uh, the communications cabinet. Doesn't actually say, doesn't say on the communications, but obviously you want to, GridServe wants to know which charge is being used, if any are broken, who's using it, who's charging, and more importantly, when you swipe a contactless card, it's this normally inside here that will send the signal through to GridServe so they can collect their money. Uh, we've got on the back of this one uh, some sort of uh, wireless uh, receiver. Uh, there'll also be a hardwired uh, internet connection inside. So this allows GridServe to monitor the charges, monitor the usage, monitor the uh, people actually charging, and then collect the money at the appropriate time. So that's the background. We then come across to these. These are individual chargers, ABB again, and this is where the incoming 400, 415, 480 volts, whichever is appropriate, comes in. And this will be stabilized in here, and that will then put out a stable voltage to, and I should, we keep calling these chargers. They're not actually chargers, they're more dispensers. Uh, the charger itself is sort of inside the car because the car has a battery management system and the battery management system will talk to the dispenser and to the cabinet and they will decide between them how much power they can take. So if you have a car which is 400 volt architecture, uh, like most Teslas, most cars apart from Hyundai Kia, um, then the first thing the car will do is say, look, I'm a 400 volt architecture, don't send me a lot more than 400. They have to send more than 400 because you can't charge with a lower voltage, but uh, it won't be sending six, seven, 800 volts through. If you plug in a Kia, uh, EV6, EV5, or a Hyundai, uh, those do have 800 volt architecture, so they will send a signal through to here saying, look here, you can let go, everything you've got, we'll take it. Uh, these are actually good normally for about a thousand volts, so not quite everything. Uh, but the communication, then what they'll do, they check the line. So it, they will do a check on all of the electrical connectors. So if the um, plug is fallen out and it's sitting in a puddle, it will be able to detect that and it will say, under no circumstances, put any current through, any voltage through this charger. So they talk. And if there's anything wrong with the car or the cabinet or the cable or the plug or anything, they won't activate. So you can't, don't do this by the way, but you can take these plugs and dip them in a bucket of water. They don't come to any harm. So for all the people who say, can we charge in the rain? They are so safe, it's unbelievable. So there's a handshake goes on. Is it safe to charge? What voltage do you need? And then what current do you need? And with all of the charges, you see a ramp up where it will put a little bit of voltage in, a little bit of current, and then it will gradually ramp it up. And the two are talking. And at some point the car goes, whoa, that's enough. We're happy there. Stop, uh, stop at this level and you can charge here. Now, as the battery gets warmer because it's charging and there is a chemical process going on. So as the battery gets warmer during a charging session, you often find that level is creeping up. So it'll go, oh, actually I'm a bit warmer now. Can I have a little bit more, a little bit more? And then you come out with a peak. And from then onwards, it's really downhill. Uh, oh, gradually, some cars have a very flattish uh, graph for charge curve. 
Others have quite a steep drop off. Others keep it virtually level and then drop off dramatically at the end. But all cars are different. You can't change this. It doesn't matter what temperature it is. It doesn't matter anything. The charging curve is set by the components in the car. So at some point then the charge keeps dropping off and off and off and off and your car will become full or it will reach the state of charge that you've set and at that point the car will say to the charger stop i've finished thank you very much can you disconnect the power and at that point you can take the plug out which up until then has been locked in place for safety and that's a typical charging uh, cycle so the plug goes back in car drives off uh, this sends a signal through saying this car took 47.3 kilowatt hours it's 79p therefore can you take this out of the bank simple as that so that's your cycle well we get a good number of our viewers telling us they are disabled and they do ask us to see if we can do anything when we're out and about filming to uh, help them to choose locations to charge their ev at which are uh, disabled friendly um, we're at GridServe today, and GridServe have got a strange approach. They have this big green area. It's not exactly a disabled bay as such. There's no signage which says disabled. However, it is clearly very distinct from the rest of the bays. First of all, it's very much wider. Secondly, it's the full colouring. So I don't think many people will be unaware that this is probably uh, meant for the disabled people uh, and it will have advantages for that but I think at busy times this will probably be used anyhow because it's not specifically disabled only uh, but when we look at the charges grids are very good indeed oh apart from the fact that the plugs are on the ground uh, we'll put those back in a minute but um, what we have here is everything is, is nice and handy for wheelchair users so you can wheel yourself right the way up you can reach the uh, charger plugs and you can reach the, uh, the contactless terminal. Screens right in front of you and we don't have a ramp or a step here. So these are particularly disabled friendly, um, but obviously these uh, are not price friendly because everything's 79p. Just going to put those charger plugs back in. Uh, you can't put that one in. And it's just something I will always do. If I see a charger plug on the floor, I always just tend to pick it up and put it back in. It doesn't cost me anything, usually a few seconds in time, uh, but that's fine. Uh, we've got one here we found when we arrived, both plugs were on the floor. That one we put back uh, quite happily. This one, there's a bit missing. Uh, there should be a holster. If we look at the others, there's a holster and that will hold it in place. This one, the holster's missing. So for this particular uh, plug, which is the Chadamo plug, we can't actually put it back in. There's nothing there, nothing there to hold it onto. So that's not possible. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the phone number and we're gonna make a quick phone call to GridServe and just tell them that one of the chargers, and this is uh, GS10866, and we'll just report this one in. Now, a lot of people wouldn't bother, but if we don't tell them, GridServe have no way of knowing that that plug, the Chadamo plug, is on the floor. There's nothing here that tells them it's in the, uh, in the holster properly secured. So consequently, we're doing a service and it means that someone can come out, put it on their schedule for uh, repair, replacement or whatever they're doing. Now, when we go to Tesla superchargers, one of the problems we have is the, there's no display. And even on the V4s, which have a display, uh, they don't tell you the power or anything that's on the app. So we can't film other cars. But when we come to a grid server or an Osprey or any of the others, they all have display screens and they show what's going on. And we do always just walk up and down and we have a look at charging speeds. In fact, we're thinking of starting a competition. Who can film or photograph the fastest charging speed you can find in the country? That's a challenge. We're gonna have a look here. We've got a couple of cars. We've got a uh, BMW iX and we've got a Jaguar I-Pace. So we've got a couple of cars here. 
and we're looking at this one which is it's at 98 percent this is running still at 27 28 kilowatts at 98 percent that's actually quite a good achievement because there are so many of these i see where once you get up into the 95 98 99 percent they drop down to just one or two kilowatts it's it's not worth staying connected this one is still putting in a sensible charge it's been here for 39 minutes uh, they've taken on board uh, 39 kilowatt hours of power so these will be 60 60 something kilowatt hours so when we come out visiting the motorway services as we've been here several times we find uh, significant changes occurring all throughout the country not just here so when we first filmed here, there were just two of the original electric highway chargers here, and it was a very sorry sight. It's since been upgraded, as have most of the motorway services. We are now getting very much closer to being able to pull into any motorway service and find 350 kilowatt decent power chargers round about there, either uh, Instavolt or uh, Tesla superchargers, Osprey, whatever make it is, but it's getting much closer to wherever you stop, you should be able to find some ultra rapid chargers. Now in our travels, we do find sites which haven't yet upgraded. We do highlight them in some of the videos and we do flag them up. And when we talk to some of the CPOs, the charge point operators like Gridserp, we will point out, hey, you haven't got chargers here. But recently we were up in the, up in the lakes and we found one, uh, Killington Lakes, and that one was just about to go live. So it's not appearing on any maps at the moment, but we found it by chance, and that one we're hoping will be live by Christmas. So there's been a massive transformation to road trips in an EV in my time with an EV, which is coming up to five years. Sunbatch is a classic example of this, and this now is a pretty good services for an EV stop you've got high power charges you've got all that you need inside what more could you want apart from less traffic so that's it for now i'm dave thanks if you have enjoyed this video click the like button and please 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 subscribe we're heading up towards 20,000 subscriptions and we would like to get there as soon as we possibly can so if you've enjoyed the video please click the subscription button if you haven't enjoyed the video leave a comment and tell us what we're doing wrong i'm dave to thank you for watching our long cast Dave takes it on And if you like what we do All we ask of you is to click that like And subscribe to follow along Thank you for watching Dave takes it on Yep <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't think of anything interesting no, to no. say <laughs>